Hello everybody, I'm Miss Jessica from EVPL McCullough and today we are continuing our chapter book story time and we have now come up with a new name and it's Variety Pack because each week I am bringing you a new book that we are previewing so you can decide if that is something that you would like to keep reading because there are so many books out there and I would love to share all of them with you but this is a really easy way to do that by just previewing a little bit of it to kind of pique your interest. Okay, so last time our Plinko board selected historical fiction for us. So we are going to be reading Paperboy by Vince Vauter. And as I was opening this book, I discovered something amazing. So at one point he was involved with our library because he actually autographed the book and dedicated it to the readers at Evansville Public Library. So that is amazing that the actual author autographed this for our library system. So this copy is at McCullough. So if you are interested in continuing reading this book, there are plenty of copies in the system, but this particular one that is autographed is at McCullough. All right, so let's kind of preview what the book is going to be about. So it says, an 11-year-old boy living in Memphis in 1959. So that's kind of what historical fiction is all about, is that it's a different time period in history, and we'll kind of give you a snapshot of what it was like to live in that time period. So this particular boy is living in Memphis, Tennessee, and we'll get to see what it was like to live during that time period. And Harper's already visiting us. Okay, so, so an 11 year old boy living in Memphis in 1959 throws the meanest fastball in town. But talking is a whole different ball game. He can barely say a word without stuttering, not even his own name. So when he takes over his best friend's paper route for the month of July, he knows he'll be forced to communicate with the customers, including a housewife who drinks too much and a retired merchant marine who seems to know just about everything. The paper route poses challenges, but it's a run-in with the neighborhood junk man, a bully and a thief that stirs up real trouble and puts this boy's life as well as that of his family's devoted housekeeper in danger. A beautifully textured coming-of-age novel that unfolds against the backdrop of the segregated South. Paperboy offers a moving and page-turning story of a boy and his struggle to speak. Very interesting. Now, I will tell you as I was reading through this just to see if this was a book that I wanted to select for our time together, I did come across some words that are in the book that at this time period were said in conversation, whereas now they would be considered inappropriate. And it is not something that we would say in our time period, whether it's calling people those names or just using those words to describe others. So I will say the word, but I will also make it a point to say that is not a word that we use any longer. So just as a heads up, um, because it is accurate to what was happening during 1959. All right, so Paper Boy. Chapter one. I'm typing about the stabbing for a good reason. I can't talk without stuttering. Plus, I promised ma'am I would never tell what happened to my yellow handled knife. Ma'am might say that typing is cheating, but I need to see the words on paper to make sure everything happened the way my brain remembers it. I trust words on paper a lot more than I trust words in air. The funny way I talk is not so much about fat pigs and cartoons. I just get stuck on a sound and try to push the word out. Sometimes it comes out after a little pushing, but other times I turn red in the face and lose my breath and I get dizzy circles going around in my head. There's not much I can do about it except think of another word or keep on pushing. The lady my parents hired to show me how to talk is teaching me to use a trick she calls gentle air, which means letting out a little of my breath before getting stuck on a word. So when I feel like I'm going to have trouble saying a word, I try to sneak up on it by making a hissing noise. Hiss. 
when you're 11 years old, it's better to be called snake than a retard. Okay, that's one of the words. We do not say that word anymore. That is not an appropriate word to use to describe people. Some days, if I've gotten stuck on a bunch of words at school, I'll come home and put a piece of notebook paper in the typewriter that someone from my father's office brought to our house a long time ago and forgot to take back. The same one I'm typing these words on now, I peck out the words that gave me the most trouble for, that, for the day. My hands know where the letters are and I don't have to think up different tricks to help me push out the word. I like the sound the typewriter keys makes when it smacks the black ribbon because it's always the same. I never know what kinds of sounds are going to come out of my mouth. If anything happens to come out at all. Just so you know, I hate commas. I leave them out of my typing anytime I think I can get away with it. My composition teacher said a comma meant it was time for a pause. I pause all the time when I'm trying to talk, whether I want to or not. Humongous pauses. I would rather type a gazillion ands than one little comma. I type so much in my room that the white letters are wearing off the typewriter keys. But the key with the comma on it, it looks brand new. And it could stay that way if you ask me. All right, so a typewriter is kind of like an old keyboard that it didn't have a screen. You would just put a piece of paper into it and you would type on the keys and it would just type directly on the paper. So kind of like, not sure if you can hear that too, if my kitties are playing. So kind of like a computer, but without the computer screen and whatever you typed would automatically show up. So it's definitely difficult to not make mistakes because those were very difficult to get rid of on the paper when you were using a typewriter. Ma'am came to Memphis from Mississippi when I was five to live with us and help take care of me. And one thing's for sure, I wouldn't have made it this far without her. Ma'am's real name is Miss Nellie Avent. My mother told me to call her Miss Nellie, but that didn't work for me because of the N sound coming after the M sound. Ma'am was as close as I could come to saying her name and she allowed us how that suited her find. She said that we made a good pair because she couldn't write very well and I had the best handwriting she had ever seen for a little man. That's what she called me from the first day when she came to live with us, little man. Ma'am is my best friend in the in all the world, except when it comes to playing ball and then Rat takes over. His real name is Art. He had it written in easy to read letters on his catcher's mitt on the first day of third grade, but I had to nickname him Rat because the A sound wasn't going to come out of my mouth that day without giving me a bunch of trouble. He allowed as how Rat was okay with him, and that made me like him from the start. He didn't even look like a rat, but he understood quicker than most kids that Rat was the best I could do with his name because of the easy R sound. Ma'am calls him Mr. Rat, which always cracks me up. My stuttering probably makes me the best nicknamer in Memphis. One of my hard baseball throws busted Rat in the mouth on the last day of sixth grade. That's the reason I told him I would handle his paper out for July so he could visit his grandparents on their farm outside Memphis. I didn't much want to take on the route, but I thought I owed it to Rat for busting his lip. Rat says I show off too much with my hard throws and I guess he's right and I needed to pay for it. The paper route was where I met all the new people in my life and where all the bad stuff happened. And some good stuff too. At least I think it was good. I'm still trying to figure it all out, all of it out. And I'm hoping that putting the words on paper will help. I knew I would like the throwing part of the paper out because throwing is what I do best. Baseballs, rocks, dirt clods, newspapers, anything. But it was no big secret that the thing worrying me the most was collecting the money for the newspapers each week on Friday night. The idea of going up to a house and ringing a doorbell was swelling my insides. The reason I hate talking to people who don't know me is because when they first see me, I look like every other kid. But two eyes, two arms, two legs, crew cut hair, nothing special. But when I open my mouth, I turn into something else. 
most people don't take the time to try to understand what's wrong with me and probably just figure I'm not right in the head. They try to get rid of me as fast as possible. The best thing I could do when my insides got nervous was talk to ma'am who lives over the garage in back of our house. From our kitchen, I saw that her light was still on. I knew she was probably reading her Bible, except she really didn't read it as much as just look at it. She had taught me to say the 23rd Psalm with her and she would move her finger along the sentences, but it never came out exactly even with the words we were saying. I climbed the steps and knocked my special knock on her door, the one that sounds like shave and a haircut two bits. So. What you want, little man? S need to s talk. We'll talk a spell, but then you have to go back onto the house for bed. Ma'am knew that collecting for the paper route was a heavy weight pushing down on me, but she also knew that I liked to beat around the bush before talking about something important. S do you ever have a s feeling that something bad is going to happen? Some little man. Where I growed up in cold water, we had an old man who made a living out of telling the fortune or telling the future. S tell s about him. This old man with a curly white beard told the for future by pitching animal bones and then paying mind to how they landed. Folks said it was blasphemy to heed of that beardy old man, but he never told me wrong. What s did he s tell? He told me my elder brother was going to come to harm. That summer, my brother John drowned in Coldwater Creek with not a teacup of water in it. How did he s drown? Nobody knows. The doctor said there was more water in that sweet boy's lungs than in the ditch. I finally got around to telling ma'am that I thought I would like the throwing part of Rat's newspaper, but the collecting part was Friday part on Friday nights was messing me up on my insides. I'll go collecting with you. S need to s do it on s my own. You be growing up, little man. I was proud of you. Ma'am said she had to do a little more cleanup in the kitchen and that she would go back to the house with me. I knew the only reason she said that was because she wanted to make sure I didn't get too down in the dumps. My father's Buick was coming up the drive as we went in the kitchen. Ma'am waited for him and held open the door when she he saw, excuse me, when she saw he was getting his big briefcases out of the back seat. What you think about little man's paper out, Mr. V? My father looked up and smiled. I'm sure he'll throw those newspapers as well as he throws a baseball. I had told my father earlier that I thought I might take on the route, and he said it was good that I was going to help out a friend. Ma'am and I went up the back stairs and down the hall past my mother who was putting white stuff on her face and things in her hair like she always did at night at the dresser in her bedroom. Good night, sweetie. I started to say good night back, but then I got stuck on the hard G and I knew if I ever got the G out, the N would also give me trouble. So, I just kept on walking down the hall to my room with my breath stuck in me and not feeling like fooling with a bunch of S tricks, seeing as how it was the end of the day and I was tired. Ma'am put my dirty clothes and towels down the laundry chute when I had finished in the bathroom and then came to my room. She patted my foot when I got into bed and turned out the light on her way out. Ma'am had stopped giving me goodnight kisses on top of my head a long time ago without me asking. You never had to tell ma'am what you were thinking like you did with regular grown-ups. She always knew on her own. That's where chapter two starts. So we're gonna stop there. So I'm wondering that he mentioned a knife in the beginning of the story and how he couldn't talk about it and wasn't supposed to talk about it. So why does he have a knife? What happens? And how is this summer going to affect his whole life? I have so many questions. So I cannot wait to read the rest of this book. All right, so we are going to be doing our Plinko board to decide what type of book we're going to be reading next time. So I'll be right back in just a moment. All right, so we're ready to drop our Plinko chip to see what it is that we're going to be reading next time. Now, I am trying to make it a point that if we do land on something that we have read recently, to switch that and redo it so that we get something new. 
Um, I did want to mention, because I forgot, that Paperboy, we have multiple copies in our system if you would like a print copy. We also actually have this as an audiobook on CD, and you can get it as an ebook as well, and you can even get it as an e-audiobook to listen to. So lots of different ways to continue reading this story if you're interested. All right, so let's get our Plinko chip going. Okay, I tried to get it to go over on this side last time and it was just being really difficult. Ooh, spooky. All right, so then this is definitely a warning that next time we will be reading something that is considered spooky, that's a little bit more of a ghost story. So if that is something that you are not interested in experiencing, if that is something that you would rather skip, definitely skip next week. But thank you so much for joining us this week. I am so excited to continue our chapter book story time where we get a lot of variety going with our variety pack. Don't forget to go to evpl.org to see all of our resources to put materials on hold. And don't forget that if you like and subscribe on EVPL Library on YouTube, then you will always be notified when we have something new and exciting that we've added. Thank you again so much for joining us and I hope to see you again next week. Bye.